That is Mohamed Mukhtar Abdele, who's a speaker of the Youth Senate in Kenya, also an executive member of the Young African Leaders Initiative, Yali Alumni Kenyan Chapter. Many thanks for joining us. On my immediate left is Naserian Kirokor, who's the founder of the Nomad Child Foundation. Many thanks for making time. Okay, so welcome to the broadcast. Let's just take a look at this particular summit that happened. Perhaps I saw the theme which was centered on, uh, it was centered on uh, youth political and economic inclusion, the scenario for sustainable regional integration. Perhaps take us a little bit more on what the youth who gathered there, the youth leaders, what you actually discussed. Okay, we widely discuss about integration and more of when you see the integration, we have a sub, sub, uh, sub theme that is about sustainable development and the role the youth play in achieving sustainable development in East Africa, Fusion 2030 and also considered Fusion 2063. So it was broadly discussed and more of SDGs and more of youth inclusion in ESC. So it was such things that we were discussing as young people and how we play a role to, towards achieving this to this sustainable development goals. Okay. Yeah. And perhaps there were resolutions, Mohammed. let me bring you in right now. The resolutions that this particular summit came up with touching on the inclusion of youth, perhaps in decision-making, in policy adoption, just take us through that. Uh, actually, the resolutions were because uh, the youth have been left out of the integration process of the East African community. They make up majority of the population. If you look like, uh, actually the conference attracted six member states of the East African community, that is Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, uh, South Sudan, and Uganda. So all those youth from those different countries, they converged in one hall. So basically, fresh ideas were put in because we understand that the youth are, they are very active. They are very vibrant. So the, res the resolutions that were brought forward is uh, the formation of the East African Youth Council. Because uh, like other countries like Kenya and uh, Uganda, they have very active youth councils. But Burundi, Rwanda, they make up the East African community, but they don't have active youth councils. So there's a need to form the, the actually it is in the process of forming through the East African community. So another thing is about uh, the voice of the youth. Most of the times, the voice, the youth are left out in the integration process. When we are starting the process of policy making, because they are the ones who are directly affected. So the, mostly, mostly we, you get, we, we don't start from the baseline. That is from where the problem is. Because as we see, the, the, we make up the majority of the population, but if you see the problems in Africa, the youth are the most affected. And the most affected. Yeah. Allow me to um, engage you right now. In terms of inclusion of the youth for effective youth participation in the EAC integration policies, Yes, we know that we constitute of a majority, not just in the East African community, but in Africa as well. And this is troubling. When we take a look at our representation in perhaps parliament, let's take an example of Kenya right now. It is easy to count the number of youth in that particular house, both in the, in the Senate and in the other house as well. Is this supposed to be blamed on the youth for not being available to participate in um, agendas to do with nation building, or is it to be blamed on the other side who are secluding the youth? How do we approach it? Okay, this one was also discussed because you see in the leadership we have in East Africa, they say that we have 3% of the youth in the leadership. That is quite not good, as you can see. Uh, youth are 70%. 70 in population, so you see three percent is too little. So the inclusion or the issues arises that the youth are so much threatened when you get into politics, it is like uh, they are so much threatened into it and it's, it makes it so hard. Like when we see injustices in the political arena, so it, most of us are too like you, 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 you have to think twice to participate in, in political things. So you see, they were like, we have to start with the NOA in youth, National Youth Council, and then we bond all this National Youth Council. We also have to have a EAC Youth 
council so that these things can really help us in shaping the youth and in more, in more I mean, mentoring them to be able to, to push into leadership. So it is both because uh, you see the leadership we have, it's all about all people. No, the young people, like 20 to 30, yeah, they, they are very young. Yes, yes. So you see, this all, all of were discussed broadly that we need to have an umbrella to mentor you, to lead them towards leadership, how they can overcome this, because they are fear, injustices. You see, it's very few youth are stable by 30. So you see, we have all these challenges. And the summit was, how can we, how can we tackle all these challenges that we are facing as youth? All right, yeah. allow me to engage you. She brought up the EAC Youth Council Bill 2017. Um, for benefit of those who are not well acclaimed to this, it's pushing to expedite the enactment of the EAC Youth Council Bill 2017 into law to embrace the full participation of young people in the affairs of the region. Now, this piece of legislation, sorry to say, there are laws put in place in terms of, we can borrow an example from Kenya right now, in terms of the gender bill, two-thirds rule. Now, what assures us that with this rule in place, that the youth will actually get the number of, representat of representatives they deserve, not just in the East African community, but also in the respective countries. You brought up that Burundi, um, the youth in Burundi are not well represented among themselves. How do we assure ourselves that this particular piece of legislation will serve the purpose? Actually, when you come back to Kenya, the, when we start with here at home, the National Youth Council, actually, it, it's, it, it's not up to date. We are using the old one. Like, so the, actually, the, now in, we, we're having a bill in Parliament. Our president in Youth Senate Kenya, Mr. Gideon Keter, is a nominated MP representing matters of youth in Parliament. So we are working on that process. So like we, we, are, we are proposing to have a special, to have a youth representation in the Youth Council. So the problem that we have is that, uh, as Nasserian has said, the society is like it is blocking the, the, the young people. So who should, whom should you blame? Should we blame the youth or we blame the society? Actually, the youth are very hardworking. But for example, when you go for a political seat in Wajia, or any, when you're applying for a job, you are told, do you have the experience? So the, it's like the, the society is not trusting us. But at the same time, the youth lack confidence. So once they have the confidence, because they are, they are very fresh, they are, they are very fresh with ideas. All right, actually. so this piece of legislation is supposed to help with the confidence or take us through this. Okay, the piece of legislation actually it was uh, the main agenda in the East Africa Youth Leadership Summit. So the piece of legislation is about uh, making sure that each country is not left behind in the integration process of the East African community. Like we said, the youth, if you count the number of youth in the East African African states, you will get that 70% are young people. So once we understand their problems, we include them in the East African Youth Council. We have one, one, one agenda of all the youth in the East African member states. So it will bring unity. As when it will be, it will be easier when the heads of state, when they convene of the, all the six African countries, when they have the support of the youth, it means the project will be easily implemented. And like where you just from 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 the top, you just uh, give orders without taking into account the considerations of the other. So now basically we are working with the other African states. We are brainstorming. We want to make sure that Burundi. Rwanda, uh, Rwanda even has Bur the countries like Burundi to make sure that they are also included because at the end you'll, you'll find that we are facing, we are, we, we are facing one problem. Okay. This is Africa that we own. Okay, okay. Mm. Um, Kirokor, allow me to um, swerve this. We've talked about the political aspect of youth integration. Let's take a look at the economic aspect of youth integration. We well know, as you mentioned, a lot of youth might not be stable as the age of 30. Now this is 
perhaps worrying because if we compare the continent with other regions as well, uh, many youth actually stand for themselves in terms of entrepreneurship. You are founder of an, of an organization as well. How do we actually challenge the youth to set themselves up, to establish themselves, and not just um, perhaps wait for help in terms of the older individuals, um, passing down, uh, you know, in terms of resources, allocation of resources. How do we inspire the youth to actually think outside the box and take things into their own hands? Mine is that we, we also discuss about entrepreneurship and innovation. I must tell you that we were so much challenged by that because you see how we come up with so many things together like youth have to do this and this. So in that summit we were like we were challenged that you have to pick what you have. Not necessarily consider funds because you see when you tell a youth to start something they must also say I don't have a capital, I don't have money, I don't have this. But you must have an idea. You cannot ask for money unless you have something that you want to do with that money. So I, must, I want to challenge you that you always have to pick something. Have an idea and stop copy pasting. Like just because someone founded an organization, you also want to found an organization. Okay. You must be driven by your passion and curiosity because passion alone, you go with your passion, it can, it can reach some point and you get disappointed. So have curiosity to know more and more and more. So the young people, something to challenge, you see most of them are still studying, most of them are depending on parents, and you see, you, as a, in the summit, we see as young as 19 people, they are into uh, in entrepreneurship. So get something and stop waiting for office job. You just want to sit in the office, have computer, and do that. We have so many graduates. Okay. So you see, three millions of graduates are expected to, to be employed every year. And we have 10 millions of graduates graduating every year in East Africa. So to, to make yourself competitive, as you wait for your turn to be picked in the three million, you must do something. You must always come up with something and stop copy-pasting. Do something of your own that you know you can attain at the end of the day and okay. to not disappoint you. Okay, Mohammed, allow me in 30 seconds, just give us your part in short in terms of what you picked from that particular ULID summit and how you will use it to help not just yourself but other youths in your particular area. You come from Wajir, right? How you will help this youth actually put it in place and establish themselves in a short one. Yes. So actually, one, one, one of the things of the summit is that how can we solve the problem? We just not be absorbing, we don't have to see the problem but to take actions. So like in Wajia, the issue we have radicalization. The youth, they lack information, they get the wrong information and they are not motivated. So what I'm going to take there is to change the face and uh, the face of the young people and make sure that they acquire the right information. And also there are very pro various programs like the Young African Leaders Initiative where I'm the executive member. So th that program actually is a program that taps into the potential of the youth where the youth are trained on how they can give impact to the society. The society. Yeah. Okay. Many thanks for making time. Mohammed Mukhtar Abdile, who's a speaker of the Youth Senate in Kenya, always a pleasure. And Nasserian Kirokor, who's a founder of the Nomad Child Foundation. Many thanks and we surely hope the impact will be felt among the youth. Let's take a look.